Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. It's Saturday, September the 22nd, 2018. Uh, moments ago, Anthony Joshua successfully defended his heavyweight titles, plural, by stoppage in the seventh round of a fight that I thought he was losing. Right now, let me let me just say this, <laughs> and uh, really, uh, it it has to be said. You know, not every president is a president. Not every British prime minister is a prime minister. I mean, the person might have the title, but might not have the gravitas. Right, this guy has the gravitas. I was very impressed with how he turned this fight around. Right, he turns it around, you notice that he wins round six. That's after, in my opinion, and this is right after the fight, I don't know what the judge's scorecard said, but this is after I thought Povetkin uh, wins the first half of the fight. Right, I thought Povetkin wins rounds three, four, and five, and because of a good late push in round one, I thought Povetkin won round one. So we're headed into round six. Anthony Joshua's title is hanging in the balance. Joshua then starts throwing a very good jab. He's been jabbing well throughout, but he starts focusing on Povetkin's body in round six. Right then in round seven, he sets it up. Understand, short punchers put you in the situation where they can throw the short punch. So Povetkin leaps inside and Joshua, who has a terrific right hand, throws a very short right hand on the telecast, the the zone telecast. I was calling it Dazen. Um, viewers have corrected me. It's the it's the zone. D A Z N. Sergio Mora, who did a fantastic job, called Joshua's right hand a Joe Lewis right hand. In other words, the right hand travels about this far. No big windup. Joshua already is prepared to throw it. And it effectively ends the fight. Povetkin gets hit with it. Povetkin, who, as I've been saying for years, is one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division, suddenly is dazed and confused off that right hand. And Joshua then is able to open up. Joshua has a great left hook. He is two-handed. He's accurate. Right? And he's the kind of guy who doesn't need the wind-up. So let me just say this. When Povetkin goes down in the seventh round of a fight, he's winning, in my opinion. Right? I had him winning the first round, the third round, the fourth round, the fifth round. I call the second round a draw. Brian Kenny on the DAZN telecast openly asked the question, on whether Povetkin won the first two rounds of the fight, right? I was scoring the fight conservatively. I gave the second round a draw. So understand, Anthony Joshua, this fight makes it to the sixth round before I felt comfortable giving Joshua a round. And then he closes the show in the seventh round, right? The referee is excellent. Even though... Povetkin looks like he's been hit by a car. Folks, it's a hard knockdown. I mean, it's a hard knockdown. There's a question during the knockdown on whether Povetkin is going to beat the 10 count. In other words, he looks that bad off. Looks like he's looking for people for either an explanation or help to get back on his feet. Right? He's looking into the crowd. Nonetheless, the ref lets him get to his feet. This is a heavyweight title fight. People have paid good money. People have waited out in the rain for this one. Right? So, the referee talks with Povetkin. 
right? Povetkin walks forward. The ref lets the fight continue. The problem is you simply cannot give a guy like Anthony Joshua an opportunity, right? Joshua knows he's hurt. Joshua comes over, folks. That last combination, I want you to look for the right hand. Right, Joshua's right hand is devastating. Unlike Deontay Wilder too, Wilder throws a long right hand. With Joshua, this is a short right hand. Right? He has a long right hand too. I'm not taking away Joshua's long right hand. But he has a Joe Lewis. We'll quote Sergio Mora, who's exactly right. He has a Joe Lewis short right hand. Another guy who was a short puncher, Rocky Marciano. Right? He ends the fight, folks. The fight's over. You know, you're marveling that Povetkin has stood up after the first knockdown. When he hits the canvas the second time, you're grateful. You're grateful that the referee jumps in and stops the fight, right? Let me just say though, that as I was watching the post-fight interview, right, um, I think it's Sky Sports. <laughs> I have to say, you know, there are times when you look at a guy and you just realize the guy is in the right place, right? He has the right position. Now, my view, on boxing is that there are two groups. There's the heavyweight champion and then there's everyone else. As I look around the world and I look at athletes and I look at statuses and positions, the only other position in the world of sports, in my opinion, that compares with the heavyweight championship is the world's fastest man. So let me just say, Anthony Joshua, we're in an era where Deontay Wilder at times is a little bit, you know, unhinged. Tyson Fury most times is a bit unhinged, right? In terms of a heavyweight champ coming across like a statesman, <laughs> I have to admit, and this is from someone who was rooting for seven to one underdog, Povetkin, who just a few minutes earlier, Thought I was on my way to a nice betting payoff. By the way, the hedge held. Joshua by KO held. Right? So I'm okay. But let's just say, even as a person who had been rooting for Povetkin, I have to say Joshua's post-fight interview, as I watched it, I thought, you know, this guy is the heavyweight champion. Right? He cuts the interviewer off. I don't care if it was rehearsed or not. He cuts the interviewer off. This is after thanking the Povetkin team and thanking the fans, right? This guy cuts the interviewer off and says, look, what people really want to know about is April 13th. <laughs> he then talks about how the fans are the ones who make the sport happen. Right? Then he goes further, and he says to the fans, let me just read it here, he says, Who do you want to fight here on April the 13th? <laughs> Not who do you want me to fight. He says, who do you want to fight here on April the 13th? Right? This is a guy who understands his importance right? to his country to the world of sports. So then, after he talks a little bit more, he says, get a poll out. It is you guys, he's talking to the fans, who make the sport. Now, I'm not sure if we've had this level of a statesman as heavyweight champion for quite some time. You know how you see a guy in front of a crowd and you look at him and you think, there's the heavyweight champ. There are these old films of Ali talking to the crowd after they'd stripped him of the title. And he says, 
who's the heavyweight champion of the world? And the crowd says, Ali. <laughs> right? And you understand that's the relationship Ali has with the crowd. Right. I remember uh, a Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis press conference where things got out of hand, depending on who you believe. Tyson may have bit Lewis in the leg or what have you. And I remember them interviewing Lewis afterwards. And I remember Lewis being magnanimous. And you thought to yourself, you know, this guy, this guy's a champion. Well, I'll just say this. Anthony Joshua, in my opinion, just had... We'll call it the second toughest night of his career. I thought he had some real tough moments during that Klitschko fight. He gets knocked down during the Klitschko fight. But understand, during the Klitschko fight, right, he's the guy who is up against the legend. This fight, he's the guy the crowd has come to see. Right? There's a lot of pressure in being the favorite, a guy who is going off at something like a greater than 10 to 1 favorite. Right, You got 7 to 1 on Povetkin. If you bet the Joshua side of the play, you were laying significantly more substantial odds. And the guy had a tough go of it. End of the first round, it just looked like Povetkin was faster and more coordinated than Joshua. It looked like when Povetkin jumped deep in the pocket and was throwing his own short shots. Johnson, uh, Joshua just didn't have the defensive skills or the reflexes to cope, right? Very rough start. His nose gets bloody, right? He looks frustrated. There's even a stretch of the fight where he's on his back foot. The shorter man is hunting him down. And to come back the way he did, I have to say, was very impressive to me. My own private thoughts are that two guys, the one guy who went the distance with him, Joseph Parker. I understand Parker has since lost to Dylan White. Okay, fair enough. But style-wise, I thought that Parker and Prevekian were two guys who were going to give Joshua a lot of problems, right? Simply because both of those guys are athletic. And I view Joshua as a 6'6 clunky guy. He's very athletic for 6'6, but I feel he has a problem with shorter guys who are a bit more coordinated, right? There is a possibility if Deontay Wilder beats Tyson Fury, and I feel Fury might give Joshua a hard time, but understand, right, Joshua does have ring coverage, and Joshua has a lot more power than Fury. For the record, I'd take Fury against Joshua, but it's a competitive fight. But understand, if Fury, who's fighting Wilder in his third fight back, right, Fury hasn't really had a grand tour of the contenders at heavyweight, right? He's still shaking the cobwebs off from a very long absence from the ring. If Deontay Wilder beats Tyson Fury, there's a distinct possibility, at least in my mind, that Anthony Joshua might have a very long reign as heavyweight champion. In other words, it's lined up for it. Joseph Parker lost his fight after Joshua. So it'll take a while for Joseph Parker to get back in a position where we, the fans, would want to see him back in the ring against Joshua. Right? Alexander Povetkin, 39 years old and KO'd. Right? There's no doubt about who won this fight. I was rooting for Povetkin. He lost. Right? In fact, the ref gave him a second chance, and he ended up back on the canvas. So, right now, it looks to me like Joshua, who might be vulnerable to shorter, more athletic guys,
has already cleared that hurdle. So there's a taller athletic guy with great footwork, Tyson Fury. And if Tyson doesn't beat Deontay Wilder in what should be a competitive fight, right? And if Joshua faces Wilder, I think Joshua is more two-handed than Wilder. I think Joshua, if he gets inside on Wilder, I think Joshua would be the harder puncher against Deontay Wilder. Outside, I agree. Wilder's right hand from outside is A+. plus, But it's going to be hard keeping Joshua outside. Right? Also, I was listening to some Joshua interviews, both before the fight and after the fight. Right? This guy is very technical. In other words, he understood that Prevetkin was going to th not throw a lot of jabs. He actually says that before the fight. Then it happens in the fight. He understood that Prevetkin was going to be keying off his jab. So if you watch him in the fight, he's stuttering his jab. Then he does make the adjustment to go to the body. So while Prevetkin looks faster, has the faster hands, is throwing more combinations than Joshua, right? Just to understand that Joshua, to me, is vastly better than who he was before he fights and gets the heavyweight title, before he fights Charles Martin, right? This guy, you know, it's interesting. There are moments in the fight where... Prevetkin, who's very skillful, is close to him and bounces right to his side, right? And Joshua's prepared for it. In other words, Joshua doesn't leave himself naked. I'll say this too. Prevetkin has a left hook that's keeping Joshua's right hand at bay, right? I got the feeling that Joshua then makes a decision to drop his left. This is the same left hand he's using to throw a jab because I believe he wanted Prevetkin to open up so he could trade with Prevetkin. Right, so you'll notice he has the left hand dangling, but I believe this is a Roy Jones move. Look at Roy Jones's old films where Roy Jones has his left hand dangling, right? Understand like Roy Jones, Joshua throws a great left hook. I got the feeling Joshua now is doing some veteran moves, trying to get an opponent out of his envelope, trying to convince Povetkin, hey, look, I'm open to your right hand. Hoping that as Povetkin then starts to focus on the right hand, he could then do things like counter it with the left hook or perhaps throw his own right hand which is in fact how the fight ends. So I thought Joshua is playing chess. Of all the heavyweights out there, this is the guy who, let's just say, seems to be perfectly cast in the role. He really does come across like a statesman. He knows who he is. He seems to be very appreciative of the support he's getting. I mean, honestly, at the end of this fight, it almost felt like a political speech. The way he thanks the opponent. He even mentions his promoter who got some jeers from the crowd, Eddie Hearn. And he had a smile on his face as if to say, hey, I know the people here might not love my promoter. But I'm grateful for what he's doing. Right? So I'll say this as someone who was rooting for Povetkin. As I said, the pre-fight video still up, the hedge held, Joshua by KO. I would have been in trouble had the fight gone to decision and Joshua won a decision. But keep in mind, the way the fight was looking, I thought Povetkin was this close to getting more than six rounds on the scorecard. Right? Be that as it may, let me give a five star out of five stars to Anthony Joshua here. He was in trouble. He was in trouble. But I thought he won the round before 
he ends the fight in round seven. I also thought he makes the adjustment to throw jabs to the body. Right? I also thought he didn't lose his head. In other words, he's losing, he gets hit with shots, he didn't get reckless. You know, had he gotten reckless, there are times where Povetkin is standing right here, ready to capitalize. I notice on those tight moments, Joshua always seems to roll away and always seems to have a hand up. Right? So uh, I was impressed. I'm one of those. Looking forward to April 13th, whoever he fights. He said his top choice is Deontay Wilder. I think that's a hell of a fight. I don't see how that fight can go the distance one way or the other. Right? I believe his toughest possible opponent out there right now is Tyson Fury, right? I'd still take Fury over Joshua, but let's just say Joshua has gotten a lot better. That's an interesting fight. Joshua would have a much bigger margin of error in that fight than would Tyson Fury. If Joshua gets by the winner of Wilder Fury, who's going to stop him at heavyweight? I don't think I see the person. He's already beaten Dominique Brazil. He's already beaten Dylan White. I don't think a Derek Chisora would have a shot on him. I don't think a jabber who doesn't have big power, someone like Kubrat Pulev, would have a shot on him. The guys who would, he's already beaten. Food for thought. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.